guys, welcome back to my video. This is Christine and I'm here to show you my Milho video that I have promised. Um, I'm going to divide it up into a few sections and I'm going to start first showing you my finishes and then I'm going to move on to showing you all the kits that I have in my stash and then I think the third part I'm going to show you, uh, talk about the ones that I'm going to start in May for Stitch Mania. So let's go ahead and get started. Actually, these first two that I'm going to show you are not ones that I've completed. Um, my son did these, I want to say, when he was 12, maybe. Uh, he saw me stitching one and said he wanted to try stitching one. So I want to say this is the first one that he did. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to show you those two first. So this was called uh, Autumn Harvest Collection. Um, uh, American Pie. I wasn't sure how much detail I'm going to go in with each of these because you can obviously see. Uh, hopefully there's not going to be a glare here because I don't have a window, but yes, I'll try to get it so that you can see in case there's one that you like. So this one is called American Pie and I think he did a very nice job on it and he really enjoyed it. Now he chose to turn his into a magnet, which I don't usually turn mine into magnets, but these are currently hanging on our refrigerator right now. So we've got this one, American Pie, and it's not ever going to quite show you as sparkly as they are in real life. And if I get too close, I probably won't be able, it probably won't stay in focus. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too close. My camera, my phone camera just doesn't do well with close-ups unless there's a lot of light. So we've got that one. And the second one that he did, matter of fact, I'll just set these up here so you can look at those. Okay, the second one that he did was this one called Banana Split, and there is a whole bunch of um, dessert-related ones, and I had originally bought this one because I was going to stitch it, and he loved it, so I let him stitch it, and this is how it turned out. Super cute, and like I said, he did a very nice job on that one too, and also turned it into a magnet. So there's that, and I have the um, quite a few other ones in this series of the desserts that I'm going to stitch. Let me make sure that that's in frame there. It's okay. All right, and next up we have, and these aren't going to be in any particular order, but this is the first Mill Hill ornament that I have ever done. And in case there's a glare, it's called Hot Stuff. And this is how it turned out. So very cute. It's kind of like, uh, seems to be a lot of not real sparkly, but more the matte colored beads on there. And I backed it with felt. And I have a tutorial on my channel of how I, you know, kind of just glue one of these little, um, oh, jewelry hooks. I don't really know what they're called, but I kind of embed it in between the felt and the back of that. And that allows you then to get like a Christmas tree hook and hook it on there. But I have a better way now that I like to do it. So these early ones have this hook done with this method, but then later on I saw somebody had done this somewhere. So I don't claim for it to be my idea, but I don't remember where I saw it. Somebody, I think, showed it on Instagram a different way to add a loop to that. But these early ones have this hook. So, really cute, hot stuff. And I know I had started at one point to make a couple of these for my boys each year for Christmas. And so this is the first year. So I, I want to say... I don't know if this was 2012, maybe, that I made that one. And then I decided to make one for each of my boys. And so my older son picked out this one. And I really hope that glare is not bad. Obviously called Popcorn. So cute. And this is how it turned out. Now that one has some, some shiny beads in there. I just think that it turned out so cute in the way that they made the popcorn look buttery. And... I have to officially, so this is another one that has one of the Christmas tree hooks on it. And one of these days I have to officially put a label on the back. Um, 
I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but right now I just have masking tape to remind myself that this belonged to my son Hunter and it was stitched in 2012. As you can see, that many years have gone by and I still haven't done anything with that backing, but eventually that's going to probably fall off. So I, I need to do something more permanent with uh, labeling that for him. All right, so the year that I did that one, um, my son picked, my other son picked out I have all the bags over here to the side. Uh, this one called Ollie Elf. And I just think that's so cute because anytime they have little dangly legs like this, it's just so adorable. Um, this here has like some gold beads that you wrap around to make a bow. And there is actually a female elf counterpart to this that I did never stitch. I think Holly Elf is her name. I'm not quite sure, but anyway. We did all the elf and that was for my son Riley in 2012 so so cute can you just see those legs all right and then I think the next year you know what I, I feel like I didn't stitch any in 2013 or 2014 then move ahead to 2015 I I think, I don't know, I'm not quite sure for sure on these years, but um, the two that I stitched for my sons that year is this one, Caramel Apple, and Caramel Apple there, and this is how it turned out. Once again, it doesn't have a lot of sparkle because it's kind of, it has a lot of the matte beads in there, but I just think that turned out so cute. It has the little... Um, bow with a little cute little star charm there so yeah i should mention that each one of these kits the this these smaller ones they well actually all of them come with a treasure so if you look it's more noticeable on some but everyone comes with like a, a special bead that they put on there somewhere so you can see in each one of these there's the treasure is just one little sort of accent bead that they have so I should have pointed out what the treasures were on each of them. So this one, I guess the treasure was more just the making a little bow there. Um, all the gold beads. And then this one, it obviously has the little dangly star. So very cute. And the year that I did that one for my younger son, I did this one for my older son. And it's called S'mores. And I remember just really loving the way this one, when I was stitching it, it just made me so hungry for s'mores. And here's how it looks. I mean, I just think that those beads look so much like chocolate and graham cracker and marshmallow. And then it had the little heart treasure on top. Very cute. Some of these are a little bit more involved than others, but really, generally speaking, you can really whip one of these out in like less than a week, you know, even a couple of days if you're real quick with it or dedicate a lot of time to it. Okay, and then let's forward to this one. Some of these I do for myself, obviously. So I picked this mallard. And where is my mallard? There he is. So cute. And it's got, looks like a little tiny bee right there, a little bee treasure. Some of them, oh, and the, yeah, see, this is, isn't this cute how they did the cattails with, like, the um, bugle beads? So cute. And they usually require very minimal backstitching. There's sometimes some accent backstitching. You can see some right there, but most of the time they're pretty, pretty minimal on the backstitching, so that's good. Okay, then moving on to the next two that I did for my boys. My older son, uh, I stitched him this nutcracker, and this is how it looks. Turned out so cute. You see that? It's this. I need to hold it this way so you can see it. So, the nutcracker. Now, I did the felt on the back, and originally I didn't put it on uh, the back of the sword. And then I noticed that it was starting to get a little bit bent. So originally, 
felt ended there and then I added on some felt but it's still not real sturdy I think I'm gonna put probably have to maybe I'll just redo the felt on the back side of that because I'm worried that this is over time gonna fall off or just bend too much so there's that one and that year I did the gingerbread cottage for my younger son which was a lot of fun to do because as you can see has all kinds of different color beads so this was fun I do remember this one taking a little bit longer because it's a little bit bigger than some of them but lots of different color beads a little bit of back stitching it's got this little treasure right there that looks kind of like a little raspberry or rosette so very cute Okay, we're almost done. We've got about four or five more finishes. And there's quite a few butterflies. And I've only stitched one of them so far, the yellow swallowtail. And this is how it turned out. Very pretty. Just love the blues. And it's got a couple of little treasures right there. I don't know if you can see. A bit and then I just backed that one with some black felt there so yes there's the yellow swallowtail I think they also make a black swallowtail a blue pansy butterfly and a monarch butterfly so eventually I'd like to stitch them all all right the rest of these I've done uh, for myself I've stopped making them for my boys because I just got sidetracked. And... Okay, so these next two I did for, uh, this is the Flamingo, and I did this for my Flamingo Sal that I hosted last July. I think it was July of 2019. And I stitched it. And you guys have heard me talk many times in my videos about it. How adorable these little legs are and these little feet. I think they're just so cute. And this is what I was talking about with the, the new way that I like to finish them now because Mill Hill gives you so many beads in these little kits. You have enough left over that you can just string them up and just make a little um, handle just, you know, using some coordinating beads. And I just attach it at the top with, you know, one of the loops in the top. And so, yes, I did that one in 2019. And that, right after I was done stitching that, I had to stitch the Christmas counterpart, which is, let me grab the, this is called Holiday Flamingo. And it's just got this cute little wreath and Santa hat on. So, cute. And then once again, I just took uh, some of the extra bugle beads. So you could do, you know, different kinds of handles. However, whichever beads you have, um, the most of left over, you just kind of make the little handle, which I think is just so much cuter. And cute little feet. So I just love those. So adorable. And we're down to the last two most recent ones, which I did this year. So you guys have, if you've been watching my channel, you've seen them already. It was the roller skates that I did that I talk about how I changed the color because the floss colors that come in this was mostly the they were reds and I wanted to change them to pinks to match the skates that I had that I had as a child and I also have a pair now so there's my handle there's the treasure and then these are some little pom-poms that I just added as just my own touch like that and then the last one that I have done to completion, I did it this year on St. Patrick's Day. I actually started it on St. Patrick's Day and finished it the next day. So it was a real quick, easy one. And this is how it looks. And it's called Lucky Day. It has just the green felt on the back and then some of the extra beads there. So... And that's it. That's it for the small finishes. Now we'll go into the buttons and beads, which are the little bit bigger kits, and I'll show you the ones I've completed with those. Okay, I'm back now with the buttons and beads kits that I have completed. So these are a little bit bigger, if you're unfamiliar. Um, six by six, I think, is what they are. 
and so they take a little bit more time to do but this is how they turn out once again they also come with a treasure so this one sorry it's called hummingbird and um, Mill Hill also makes frames that fit these. I only have one and I don't know where it's at. It's a little wood frame, but you know, you can frame them in anything. And this is how they look. So they're a little bit more full coverage. Matter of fact, I believe this one, I altered it a little bit because the stitching kind of only sort of just kind of went over to the side. It didn't cover the whole thing. And I ended up stitching the whole thing full coverage just because I had extra thread. So I thought I might as well do it. So that's how that one looks. So cute. I love the hummingbird. Let's go to the very, very first one I ever did. Is this one right here and it's called Midnight Farm. And it actually has some glow-in-the-dark thread. So all of this sort of uh, little bit up in the clouds, some highlights up in the clouds and around the doors and this ghost here glow in the dark. So super cute. And you can see that's not full coverage. I mean, you can kind of see that it's, it's, there's a lot of unstitched, unstitched areas there. And then the treasure that came with it is this cute little ghost. Jack-o'-lantern, so cute. So, love that one, and it's called Midnight Farm. All right, and then I did this one here called Spring Robin. And I think I just did this one last year. And this is how it looks. So it came with a little butterfly treasure and cute little blue beads and the eggs. This one had a lot, <clears throat> quite a bit of back stitching compared to most of them just because of the nest and the bird's feathers. So that was a little bit tedious, um, but not too bad. So that one really turned out cute. And next up, we have goldfinch. I think I did this two years ago, and this is how it looked at. Oh, this one turned out so nice. Now, see this one I didn't do full coverage, and you can see how it's sort of kind of the stitching sort of just tapers off. And I could have probably filled that all in, but I think I was just kind of done with this one by the time I got to that point. And it has a cute little dragonfly treasure and the little um, cone flowers, echinacea. So cute. I really love that one. The colors on that are just so bright. You can see the picture doesn't really do it justice. You know, you never really quite know how nice these are going to turn out until you stitch them. And then they just are always pretty amazing. Two more of these left. Um, next up, I've got this one called Midnight Glow, which I did, I think, just last year in 2019 around Halloween. And this is how it looks. I love these dark iridescent beads right here. Very cool. And the melted wax candles. And it comes with a bat. Treasure. I believe all of the beads are from the um, Another Button Company. Could be wrong on that. but. And last but not least of the buttons and beads is this one here called Pumpkin Patch. I mean, I'm sorry, it's called Old Time Harvest. And I actually finished this one. Like, I just really fancied this one up. Actually, I don't even know if it's going to fit in here. This is one um, I did a... Actually, I believe I have a video on my channel of me finishing this one. Um, so, I just was trying something new um, based on a tutorial that Stitcherista was doing. She was taking these canvases um, that you can just get at the store and just kind of painting them and adding scrapbook paper and embellishments and just almost like doing a scrapbook layout. So this one just turned out so cute and I loved it. I don't know why I haven't done more of them because it's really cute. So. All right, that is it for the finishes. 
So we are now moving on to the two works in progress. And the first one is this one called Ravens. And I started it and I just don't know why I haven't gotten much done on it. This is my needle minder. But it's, yeah, I, I need to get that one done. I'd like to get that one done this, this um, by Halloween this year for sure. Because I have quite a few Halloween ones you'll see. So not much done on that. And let me see if I can show you the beads that come with it. And then it, it also comes with the little bat. Yeah, oh, it's called the button collection. So maybe it's not another button company. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's another button company that makes these or not, but I feel like it is. And then these are just some of the beads that come with it. So. Yeah, in case you're unfamiliar with the Mill Hill kits, I probably should have said that they come with everything you need. So you get your perforated paper, you get your treasure, you get the beads that you need, and the smaller kits even come with a magnet, and then you also get um, a needle to stitch with, and then a needle, a beading needle. So everything that you need, and then obviously the floss too. So um, yeah, you get everything in the kits, so they're they're great. If you haven't tried one or maybe you're intimidated by the beading, you know, try one of the little ones because they're really easy and lots of fun. Okay, it's this one right here that I started last summer. It is called Hamburger and only got a little bit of the bun and a little bit of the tomato done. So it looks like it comes with a little heart. And these are the beads that come with it, and it does come with a magnet. So, yeah. And not a lot of floss. My floss is a mess on this one, but as you can see, that's the floss. And, yep, definitely want to get that one done. Okay, let's put that away. And then we will move on to... Okay, so now we're ready to look at the ones that I have in my stash that I have yet to start. Let's start first with Winged Monarch. So we'll start with the buttons and beads. These are the bigger ones that I have. So not much to say about them. So we'll just show and hopefully it won't, uh, won't um, have too much of glare. Moonlit Kitties. So you'll see I have quite a few of the Halloween ones because there's some really cute ones. And I've seen a lot of these stitched up and they are just really, really cute. This one's called Harvest Home. Moonstruck. I love all the purples and pinks in that one. Really great. Moonlit treaters. These just look so great displayed on Halloween. I just can't wait to get them all done. Like I said, these bigger ones, they, they take a little bit more time, so I can't get through them quite as quick. And then we've got a couple of bird ones. This one is the chickadees, so then I'll, that'll be able to hung, hang up with the other birds that I've got done. So, chickadees. Nuthatch, and those both are look like winter, kind of winter-related ones, yes, from the winter series. So I'm trying not to crinkle these too much because my microphone is right next to them. So cute though, little nut hatch. And this one came out new recently. Like this is a pretty new one, and it's a series that uh, comes with. There's a starfish, a seahorse, uh, then there's this conch shell, the nautilus shell. I feel like there's one more in the series, maybe a different shell, but I love this one because growing up, 
Um, my mom had one of these conch shells, and I used to just love it. It looked exactly like this, and I used to love just holding it up to my ear and hearing the ocean in it. I thought it was the coolest thing. I wish she still had that shell, but when I saw this, because um, I'm not much of an ocean or sea kind of person, but this just brought back a pleasant memory from my childhood, so I just really wanted to stitch this one. So, yep. And last but not least, this one is one of the National Park's Santas because Mill, has, Mill Hill, and surprisingly, if you notice in my stash here, I don't have any of the Santas. This is the first Santa I have, and there's tons of Mill Hill Santas. And this one I loved because it's got, it's the Yellowstone Santa, and it's got the Grand Prismatic Spring and Old Faithful, and I just love, love, love Yellowstone. It's my favorite place, so I had to get this. And I'll probably collect all of the National Park Santas when I go to those national parks. So this one is just really cute. So yeah, I believe it is the only Santa I have in my stash. Okay, so those are the buttons and beads that I have. And now let me grab the, uh, the small ornaments and show you those, which ones I have. Okay, it appears that I lost some footage yesterday, this clip that I'm about ready to show of all my kits, because... Um, yeah, I hit pause when I thought I was hitting record and hit record when, you know, trials and tribulations. So anyway, I'm back 24 hours later to show you now the kits that I have, the small kits that I have yet to stitch. So let's start with this one. Um, these first three that I'm going to show you are three that my son picked out after he had done those first two that I showed earlier on in the video. I took him to the needle workshop and he picked out three more that he thought he would eventually like to stitch, and this acorn is one of them. And, um, let's see. Yeah, these earlier kits are older kits, I should say. They don't have uh, quite as much floss. They're a little bit smaller, easier to do. And you can see I got this at a stitching shop, which is my local needle workshop in Lakewood, Colorado. So, I'll try to aim these. Let me make sure I'm not getting a glare. Let's see. Can you see that okay? Yes. It's going to be tricky not getting a glare from the window. Um, so that's the first one. Acorn. Uh, the second one he picked out is this one right here called football. And I love football, so I won't mind stitching this one. I just realized I don't think they have a hockey related one. Not much floss. This one looks really quick and easy to do and look at the nice big treasure that comes with it. Um, so yes, football. And the third one he picked out is Honey Pot. This one looks a little tedious. It's got the little back stitching of the word honey right there. Um, looks like quite a few the different beads, but very cute. I won't turn them all over, but yes, so we've got, let me see how best to aim that here so you can see it about right there. Oh, very challenging, very challenging. Okay, honey pot. All right, a couple of Halloween ones. These now are ones I've chosen. Uh, Wendy's cat. This adorable black cat. I'm not much of a cat person, but if I wasn't highly allergic to cats and had a cat, I would definitely get a black one because those are my favorite. And look at those nice Halloween colors. So, yeah. And another Halloween one I have is this one called Tombstone with a couple of ravens and also another very small, pretty small one. Looks pretty easy and quick to do. Not much to say about that. Um, and I have a Christmas one called Pinecone. I've seen this one stitched up and it's really really turns out nice. It's got three little treasures in there. You can see. And these all, like I said, these small ones all come with a magnet. 
oh, you know what? I'm surprised I don't have this one. I don't know if you can see that. This one is called a, it's like a, it's called sweater weather. And it's like a, like a knitted sweater. I love that one. I don't have that one yet, but I'm definitely going to be buying that one here in the near future. I don't know if you can, it's a very small picture. Can you see that right there? All right, pine cone. Next up, uh, more of the food ones, a pretzel. This is one that I'm going to stitch for my older son because he loves pretzels. He loves big pretzels, and I love how the beads look like, how the salt, the beads look like salt on there. So cute. Those colors. Um, and then this one I had bought um, to, so the hamburger that I showed earlier, that's the work in progress. I'm making that for uh, one son, and the other son's going to get the pizza slice. So I need to start this one, and... Um, yeah, I thought I had started this one, but apparently I haven't started it yet. So, pizza slice. Okay, more of the dessert ones. This one's called Root Beer Float. Love that. Love the little, little maraschino cherry on top. <laughs> Your float and to go along with that one for my other son Ooh, stuck together is this one right here the triple scoop ice cream cone who's getting hungry looking at all this stuff me it's really good little heart charm there treasure so we've got triple scoop down to the last few. This is one I picked out for myself, tomato pin cushion. Um, seems like tomato pin cushions are becoming awfully trendy again right now. I mean, they've always kind of been trendy, but I've been seeing a lot of them recently being used in designs, and so I think I will stitch this one sooner rather than later. It's got the little needle and thimble with the little pins in it, so I think that's cute. Doesn't look too difficult. That may just have to be a mania start, a stitch, a millhill mania start. And uh, here we go with a seagull. I've also seen this one stitched, and it turns out really nice. I'm trying to see what the little there. Can you see that sort of iridescent star in there? Yep. Don't know why I haven't stitched that one yet. And the last one is the hedgehog. I thought I had more butterflies, but I apparently don't. Um, I need to get more of the butterflies, because like I said, there's a black swallowtail, a blue pansy butterfly, a mo smaller monarch butterfly. I've got the big one, but yeah, I need to get the rest of the butterflies. But this adorable hedgehog I love. Looks a little tedious because there's a lot of back stitching there with the, um, I don't think you call them quills because it's not a porcupine, but the little furs, the little, the little hair, fur, probably the fur. Yes, so cute. I love those pink flowers. And that is it. All right, so I... Um, now back to what I filmed yesterday and we'll continue on with the rest of my video. I wanted to show you something while I'm at it. While I have all of the Mill Hill, while we're talking about Mill Hill, I wanted to show you that this, okay, it kind of looks like a mess right now. But this is a little bead organizer I have where I keep all of my leftover Mill Hill beads from all my kits. Now, these all still need to be sorted. Well, they're sorted. They just need to be put in these little containers because um, I think I'm going to need to get another one of these. So let me just show you how this works. Um, I can't remember who makes this. Oh, hold on a second. Let me see here. Okay, these are the tags that come with it. It looks like it's called um, Bead Storage Solutions. So anyway, um, these are the little tags. As you can see, you can pull them off and they fit right in front here so you could see what beads you have, but I have yet to do that. Uh, it's one of the things I need to organize. 
let me see if you can see can you see all the beads in there so you basically just can pull them out and I have well it does look like I, I do have the number written on the bottom on some of them but it just has this like little snap open and you can see so yeah these beads are all left over from my Mill Hill kits because they give you so many but I only have so many blank ones left and I actually have all of these that I've taken out of the Mill Hill kits that need to be added. So I just sort of keep track of them when I finish up a kit. I, yeah, you can see you get a lot of them left over for some of them. And, um, yep, so I'm starting to get quite the bead collection just from the leftovers. So I need to organize these and put them all in their little little containers and put their little tags on them but it's kind of cool because it has this lid that snaps on top and just kind of locks down and then you can keep it and it's just nice because you can see all your beads that you have so all right I just thought I'd show you that just in case uh, you want to use something like that I'll put a link to it in my uh, Amazon page my Amazon affiliate page that I have I put a link to it down below because I'm pretty sure I got this on Amazon so I'll have to check and see. I did not check before I filmed this to see if this is even still available. So if it is, I'll link it below. I think I have uh, one more part I'm going to talk about next, and that's my plans for Stitch Mania 2020, which is going to be Mill Hill Mania. Okay, I tried to fit them all in the camera so that you can see this is going to be my lineup for Stitch Mania. 2020. So as you can see, I'm going to do a Mill Hill Mania. If you don't know what Stitch Mania is, if you're new to my channel or new to the cross-stitching community, uh, Stitch Mania was started in 2015 and it started out as just starting uh, and having a new start every day for the first 15 days of May. But since then, it has morphed into pretty much it can be anything that you want it to be. Some people do monogamous ma monogamania, where they just work on one project for the whole month of May. Um, or, you know, you can theme it to however you want. Maybe you want to start something every day for the, all 31 days. Or you want to do whip mania, which is what I did last year, where you work on all your um, works in progress, you know, however you want to do it. This year I decided since I have so many Mill Hill kits that I'm going to do Mill Hill Mania and I think this is going to be my lineup. So I'm going to go ahead and do the um, two more desserts uh, for my two boys and then this is already a work in progress and so is that. So I'm going to make, make a point to work on both of those and then this one, since I'm doing the hamburger for one son, I want to do the pizza for the other son. And then these are the two that I just chose for myself that I happen to like. And then I wanted to definitely do the National Parks Yellowstone Santa just because I have already been to Yellowstone. So I'm, I'm kind of, I think that would be a fun one to do. And this one, just because it's spring and I've done, I usually do the birds, uh, a bird one. So this year I'm going to do a butterfly. And then this one I just love, so I'm going to do that one. So that's going to be my lineup. Um, I don't know how I'm going to uh, work it. I think I'll probably just, I don't know, I'm kind of thinking instead, of maybe start one every other day is what I'm going to attempt to do. But that may change, and I may find that, um, you know, I, I want there to be, since there's only 10 and there's obviously 31 days in May, that'll give me sort of... Uh, Oh, some leeway to work on either some other things or if I want to work on one maybe longer than one day then I can or if I want to uh, you know maybe if I don't have that chance to start one you know if there I just it'll just be there there'll be some some room to play there so that's my plan that's my lineup um, feel free to join along if Mill Hill Mania sounds like something you want to do or even if you want to just do a couple or maybe uh, I've had a couple people say that they've never tried a Mill Hill before but have lots of them in their stash and they want to maybe take this as an opportunity to give one a try for the first time so um, however you want to do it I'd love for you to join along with me and um, you, we can just use the hashtag Mill Hill Mania and that's mania with a Y like the, the month of May Mia Okay, so that's it, guys, and until then, we'll, uh, I'll see you in May with Mill Hill Mania. Thanks for watching. Bye.